It's Brian Preston, the money guy. How are you handling your money? Are there big picture things? And I'm going to go ahead and throw myself under the bus on a few of these things. So I just those, those are full my disclosure. Are my I know you ones. love it when I when I kind of admit that I might have been wrong on some things. And I don't know, maybe wrong's not the right word, but definitely recalibrating and, and adjusting some things. So the first one is credit cards. Okay. Here's one, and I'm so mad. I just got back from Podcast Movement. You know who I didn't get to see at Podcast Movement? Steve Stewart. Oh, really? Steve. Yeah. Steve. So the first one is credit cards. And Steve is one of those guys that says no credit cards. Right. Uh, he's always, and, and, and I'm of the opinion. Now, I first want to lay some ground rules. I think all credit cards should be paid off monthly. If you can't pay your credit card off monthly, you don't need a credit card. Fair enough. Because I, I want to make sure that all of our our listeners, because we are in Dave Ramsey's backyard, I don't like to step on Dave's territory. So credit cards have an inherent risk sure. that if you can't handle debt, they are a dangerous tool. Yep. Very, very dangerous. Um, I'm one of those people, though, that I see the credit card companies and I see these benefits they offer. And I am... You just can't help yourself, right? I have a sickness. I really do have a sickness. But the sickness, this is, the, and this is why I call it big picture. This is why this show, this is part of the inspiration, is that I think a lot of you guys, you're watching a financial show, and you want somebody. We're kindred spirits. Me and you out there, you think like I do, where you want to maximize, you want to squeeze every ounce of what could come out of that credit card or the benefit. Right, yeah. So here's the problem. I have a credit card for hotels. That I have a credit a lot card. Of do, that's reasonable. I, I have a credit card for airlines. Okay, different one than the hotel one? Yeah, it's different. Okay. I have a credit card for gas. Okay. All right. That's my Costco a lot card. Of folks have credit. Okay. Um, I have a credit card that has rotating benefits, like it's a um, Ultimate Rewards, I think, or something like okay. that. But so, and then I've got Discover because it's got rotating. Okay. And then I've got the 2% card from Fidelity. Okay. Um, you, got no, you got a Target no. card? Do you have one of those? Target yeah, but we're not, I'm, I'm talking about generalized, Just, okay, so not store okay, credit okay, cards, because okay. we could go down a, a whole okay. different rabbit hole. All but right. it's um, here's what happened with me that makes me realize, because and I th- thought of Carter. We did a great show on credit cards with Carter Thomas, yep. who's one of our associates. And Carter is our go-to credit card guy. And he let me know that... He likes like the Chase Sapphire, and this is not a recommendation. I'm just giving you the example of his research. He liked the Chase Sapphire because it did the behavior of a lot of the travel cards because realize Chase is the backbone of a lot of your, they handle like Southwest, they handle like Disney, right. they handle, there's a lot of cards that, that Chase does, is the backbone for. So if you do like the Chase Sapphire, you can rotate into some of these travel programs with the hotels, with the airlines, but it's just they're all housed in, in the one place. The only thing you miss out on is like the upgraded seat status or boarding the plane and, right. and maybe some of the luggage discounts or things like that. But I realized my wife's flight to Philadelphia, because she went to Podcast Movement mm-hmm. too, was canceled at the last minute. Okay. And there's trip interruption insurance that some credit cards offer you. There's also, um, like I know Chase Sapphire... Their special upgraded one has where you get global entry for free or $300 of travel expenses every year reimbursed. Now, there is an annual fee to that card. I started thinking maybe I'm doing this credit card thing wrong in the fact that I have OCD'd all these different categories to the point that I don't really know. I can't keep up with all my benefits. Well, that's, I was just sitting here thinking if you have, I mean, just the thought of having, I don't like rotating card juggling. Myself. Yeah, if, if you have that going on. That just seems like that's not in the like realm or in the scope of like simplicity. And I do a good. I think I'm probably at seventy to eighty percent of maximizing the card. Do you think my wife is doing any of this ga- gaming of the juggling of the cards? You know, just in case she's listening, I'm gonna say yeah. No, she's yeah. not. I mean, and she will admit to that too. So I think that what I am reevaluating is keeping the big picture. Because remember, keeping this thing on point with what the show topic is is that I want to encourage you, and maybe it's not credit cards for you, maybe it's some other part of your financial life, and we're about to get into even more, where you're letting the minutia and that extra, trying to get that, squeeze that little every drop of value out of something to the detriment of the big picture. And I might need to consolidate my financial life on the credit cards to where I'm not paying seven different credit card bills each month. And now remember, paying off. I don't carry balances. 
I'm going to get so much hate mail for when people find out how many credit cards I have. But it's, um, it, it's something I'm telling you, I'm reevaluating that. The, the next one, cash reserves. Guys, I get emails probably every month, it seems like, from my money market holding. Uh, you know, it's one of those FDIC banks. And um, they're get, we're getting close to 2%. Yep. I mean, I think right now I'm at 1.75%. Like Capital One is doing 1.75. I'm sure many of the others are. And here's the good news. I'm excited to say at some of the brokerage companies for the investments, like Fidelity and other right. things, they're getting better with their cash re- now with their cash reserves. One thing I want to tell you, and I'll use Fidelity as an example. This is not an endorsement. I don't want you. This is not me telling you to go use their product. I'm sure. just telling just you something example. I'm familiar yeah. with is that Fidelity has a default money market in your brokerage account called FCash. It's just a general cash sweep feature. Yeah, it's it's F cash, all right. If you take the F <laughs> literally on that, because don't do the default of F cash. Do the cash reserves that's fund. Right. Maybe that's inappropriate to say because the F cash is not going to pay you. There are the better good money. options out there. That if you do have an investment account, if you do hold cash at a brokerage, just check to see what your cash is in and what other alternatives might be available at the brokerage company. So just pay attention to your cash because it's getting to the point where yield. Is still not. I mean, if you ask me, what's a good amount where it's going to get your twelve-year-old excited about saving money again? Probably three percent. And also, your retired people out there, where you're not so far out on the risk spectrum that you're taking too right. much risk. It's probably going to be healthy when we get cash back up to three percent. But in the meantime, still pretty cool that that it, that it's getting on up there. Um, let's talk about investing. Here's my question for you guys out there when I talk about investing. Do you have a plan with all the pieces working together, or do you have a quilt or patchwork where things are just all over the place with you, with patchy financial decisions? The quilt. The quilt. The quilt. I mean, it is of investment. I mean, it is. We see this all the time. I can. I see people come to me, and I look at they. They send me copies of their account statements, and I'm like, oh, you were obviously working in the mid '90s uh-huh. because you had. This fund, the top 20 technology funds, or you obviously, you had this account when you were working for this company in the mid-2000s. I mean, I can almost, it's kind of like when you go to a fair and they have this little booth set up to get stuffed animals, but you guess your age or your weight. I can look at your old 401k statements and kind of tell you the year that you bought those investments. And the problem with this patch or this quilt of life that you built with your investments is that it's not working together. You don't have that that consolidated pizza pie where the left hand and the right hand and everything is working yeah. together. So if, you got to work on that. If, if you've ever considered being uh, a client of the firm and you've had a conversation with me, you've probably heard this analogy before. We say this all the time. Uh, you know, we think about if you go to like an, an orchestra or a symphony, you have all these different instruments. If all of those instruments started playing on a different sheet of music, different rhythms, different tempos, it would just sound like a whole bunch of noise. And that's kind of what we see in these financial situations, just a whole bunch of noise. But if you can get all of those different instruments playing on the same sheet of music, same rhythm, same tempo, you can create something beautiful. It is amazing. And that's what we... That's what you can do with your financial situation if you consolidate and get you know the pieces in order and not have this patchwork quilt of investments out there. <laughs> kind of I, had to, this... I had to stay with like different analogies there. I had to kind of blend them all together. Um, kind of staying on on tack with, track with the the investment side of things. I, I I would ask you, do you know? Have you lost sight of what your money is supposed to be doing? And what I mean by that, Bo, is. Are you getting sidetracked by some of these strategies out there? Individual stocks yep. versus knowing diversified portfolio, sector or, mom- or momentum plays, or even day trading strategies. Mm-hmm. I'm always shocked at how many people find out we manage money, and they're always like, let me tell you about my, ta- my, my, my stock trading strategy. And I'm like, oh, we don't really do or, that. I love this. Hey, what should I go buy right now? Oh, you're a financial planner? What, what's hot pick right now? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Index. Target retirement funds sound good. <laughs> um, so that leads me kind of the next thing. Is it time to partner and have a partner in the process? And a lot of you guys, you hear that and you're like, oh, here's where they come in. I knew this thing was an infomercial somewhere. But I, I want you to really go deep and understand what I'm talking about here is that when I say, do you need to bring somebody in to help you make financial decisions? This comes from my own life experience is that I grew up in a household where my father did not want to pay fees to an advisor. 
He was I mean, just tight. I, he was just that, tight, I think right? there's a lot. He was a great saver. My parents, incredible examples of how to be good with money and how to save money. The problem, if I was giving constructive feedback to both of my parents on, their, on the way they handled their finances when I was growing up, was that their idea of investing was CDs. Okay. Now, that was better. It's definitely, if you'd been doing that in the last 10 years, you basically were putting your money under a mattress, but still was not as good as like my father-in-law who also good with money, mm-hmm. but I would I would dare say I have to be because I know my mother in law listens to our show now. But I would dare to say I think my parents were even tighter they than, just, than my yeah, in laws okay, were. But here's the good news for my mother in law that because I know she might be watching this. My father in law has unfortunately passed away already, but he was buying the Fidelity Magellan Fund. Oh yeah, back when the Fidelity Magellan Fund was the Fidelity Magellan Fund that was just right. knocking it out of the park. And I would dare say, I think my father-in-law investing less money has substantially more money than my parents were able to accumulate, not because of the discipline of saving, but because that money was working so much harder for yeah, them. Because he was willing. And, and, and now, did he, and maybe you don't know the answer to this question, did he go find that? Did he have that investment on his own, or did he have an advisor? No, he definitely had an advisor, because okay. it wasn't even, you know, realize Fidelity Magellan Fund had many varieties, including an advisor-based platform where it had commissions and other things. So I'm not even saying that my father-in-law bought the best version of it, because right. he had somebody sell it to him. But I'll tell you, it worked out much better than my father doing the CD. So it's kind of that rich dad, poor dad, That's right. you know, on, on letting the money work for you. And it's also, it's not just about the basics of investing. Um, how, you know, how often, I can just tell you, I had this discussion that, I mean, just in the last month, mm-hmm. we've helped a client who had the opportunity to buy into their business they've been working with. We've yeah. had, we've helped, um, we've had clients pass away, or at least a family member of a That's client right. pass away. So we had talked to them about what are the duties of an executor. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, th- there was... We've had some clients, you know, unfortunately, they, either they themselves or even possibly their family members have had to go through a divorce, which there's yeah. some unique well, financial circumstances some things. there. So there's all kind of things where, and the other thing I would say, because I had this discussion earlier today, and it's not even in the show notes, is that when you get to a certain level of success, you just the, the value of the enterprise is so big, mm-hmm. you now start getting nervous, am I going to blow this thing That's up right. just because of the size of it. So, so think about that. We'll transition, but that was our say is that you, there are a number of you out there that you go get to a point where you say, man, I wish I had somebody to look over my shoulder. When you get to that, consider taking the relationship to the next yeah. level. Go check us out. We, we, we have resources that, that for is, you. That's a big one, Brian. And I, it didn't click while you put it in there. It just clicked right now. Cause I feel like we have that conversation all the time with a lot of folks who have done an amazing job building assets. And it's the behavior that has allowed them to build their wealth is the fact that they are so cost conscious. They do save so much. They do spend so little, but it's just like you said, sometimes it's easy for us to hone in on that piece and forget the big picture of exactly what you said, how big the enterprise is. We'd rather save $100 here mm-hmm. and forget about the thousands over here that we could be foregoing or missing. It's or like me and up. my credit cards. Right. I am focusing on this feature of getting that extra 1%, not recognizing I might be missing screwing the up my, right. the behavior and the benefits of, of doing it. So, so pay attention to that part of it. I want to transition to, to tax planning because it's one of those things, when I talk about big picture concerns and blind spots with taxes, there's really two things I'm worried about. The first one is the oblivious, oblivious side, whereas the person doesn't even realize that taxes should go into their consideration of planning. Those are the people don't even consider, don't plan. It's just like, whatever, yeah. I'm not worried about it. You need to have a plan of action. The other one are the people who let the tax tell wag the entire financial yep. dog. What I'm talking about that is, is that just like I was picking on the credit cards, just like I was picking on what you pay attention to not wanting to pay anything to any fees outside of, because is that you might be missing the overall planning opportunity because you're hyper-focusing on not paying the government any money whatsoever on your taxes. And, and I think another, and we see this all the time, there, there's actually a lot of misinformation around this. And I'm going to speak to like a specific example. If you have aging or elderly parents, there's a lot of misinformation around the appropriate tax strategies for aging parents. Like the, the old school mentality is, I need to get assets out of my name. I want to put this in your name, or I want to put your name on the house, or I want to give you this investment. 
Yep. That's not always the best solution. That's not always the best path forward. So when you do have those sorts of circumstances, you have to plan for it, but also make sure you do your research and understand the implications of the recommendations or the decisions that you're making as it, as it relates to tax policy. I, I don't mean to bring it back to the bringing in a professional because it's not necessarily even us, but if you do get to the point where you're worried about your parents, because I know there's a whole group of you that have parents out there, and you're thinking about those planning goals for what do we do with the house? You know, what, how does it work with their investments? Should we be gifting? Should we be right. doing charitable? How do we get this? They have Coca-Cola stock from the 70s. Yeah. What do we do with that? That stuff, don't, don't do that willy-nilly. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you can really screw things up if you're not careful. Right. So even if you're not talking to somebody like us, bring in somebody Find to just make sure. Measure twice, cut once. So that you don't make, we've seen those mistakes being made, and that leads to kind of a kind of a great way to close this out. And this is, if you tuned in, like I said, this is our first gorilla live stream. Who knows how this turned out with everybody? But we had a blast doing it. Like I said, you, I got to fulfill so many things teacher as well as actor or person who's on live stage i love this um and the fact that we got to do this live stream if you're if you're out there listening in podcast world to this you're not watching on youtube uh what we're about to do is we're we actually we've had a bunch of folks in here with us brian you don't even know this we've got tons of questions that we're going to answer oh really uh once we kind of shut you know shut down the official we're going to do a little q a Right, so we've 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 got some great questions. We'll go. Are we doing a Q and A today? Yeah, we've got some questions. We're going to run through. So it. we actually had questions uh, coming yeah, through. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, we do. So uh, if you're someone listening out there, make sure you tune in. What was the date and time? August fourteenth, which will be a Tuesday, right. at four forty-five Central or five forty-five Eastern. I'll help you out, Bo, Thank because I know so those time zones can be be an issue sometimes. Not not my jam. But it is one of those things where we want you to to, to feel free ask us questions, and we'll we'll make sure we we save a little time at the end for all the live streaming people that will answer some of those questions. And I'm a, this is the part where I was excited, so maybe this is full circle turn of events, Bo, and the fact that I ambushed you with this uh-huh. and the fact that we found out we could do this live stream. Now you're ambushing me by giving me this Q&A, and I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. So this is fun, but check it out, moneyguy.com. Guys, we love doing this, and hopefully you'll see. I think a lot of you who have been watching this live probably realize wow, they really don't edit this show. I mean, you're probably wondering, because I just got back from Podcast Movement, and a lot of the, the technical tract was, how do you edit? How do you make yourself feel, you know, take out those uh's, take out the the me- mis- mix-ups and other right. things. If you watch this show long enough, you realize we don't take much out. So if you come experience the live show, you can see it on YouTube. We'll probably be out there on Facebook Live. We're trying to, you know, this we're getting this all figured out, but there's going to be a way for you to connect. So, so make sure moneyguy.com, and then thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us. Um, I'm your host, Brian Preston, with Mr. Bo Hansen. Moneyguy.com, August 14th. 445 Central, be there.